So in today's video, we'll be talking about insects. So it's just a brief introduction to insects. These are those small animals that many of us find to be fascinating, creepy crawlies. And so um, here are some pictures of insects and one picture that isn't an insect. So we have a fly in the top left. In the bottom right, we have a skipper, which is a type of butterfly slash moth that we'll get into later. Top right, we have a ladybug. In the bottom left, we have a butterfly. And in the bottom center, we have a spider. Can you guess which one isn't an insect? That's right. The spider is not the insect. Remember, spiders are arachnids, not insects. The topics we'll be covering today are what are insects? Give some examples of insects. I'll talk about how insects are classified and how they're broken down into orders and families. And then we'll go through some common uh, insects that you may see on a regular basis. So, what are insects? Insects are made of three main body regions, which we call the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. All right. Head, the thorax, and the abdomen. They also have jointed appendages, meaning their legs have joints, just like ours. Insects, however, have an exoskeleton. This is in contrast to what us humans have, which is an internal skeleton. The skeleton for humans is inside the body, while in insects it is on the outside of the body. All insects have six legs. Sometimes, though, finding all six legs can be tricky depending on the arrangement in the insect. but at the end of the day, they will have six legs. And lastly, insects are cold-blooded. This means that they cannot create their own body heat, at least usually. Some can by vibrating their wing muscles, like some types of bees, but most cannot create their own body heat. So in this picture to the right, you can see we have two insects. Both of these happen to be flies. The bottom fly that is being eaten is called a surfid fly, and the top fly is, that is eating the surfid fly is called a robber fly. Both of these are also predators. So let's take a look at the main regions of the insect before we move on. In green here, you can see this is the head. The head contains a lot of the sensory organs like the eyes, the mouth, and the antennae. In red, you can see what we call the thorax. The thorax is where locomotion takes place. Think of it as the area where the muscles are located for the wings and the legs. And lastly, in blue, we have the abdomen. The abdomen is the area of the body where a lot of the organs are contained and where waste leaves the body and where reproductive organs are located. All insects have these three main body regions. On this slide, I've given some examples of commonly encountered insects. So we have a praying mantis in the top left. In the bottom left, we have some butterflies. And we have some Japanese beetles in the middle here. The bottom there is a stag beetle. And the top, we have a ladybug. I'm sure we're all familiar with ladybugs. We have a bee, looks like a honeybee, a mosquito, and a caterpillar. Keep in mind that some of these insects are considered beneficial and some are not. Some insects that you may know <clears throat> that you may know are considered invasive, but they aren't actually native to your area. So let's look at how insects are classified. The classification system helps with organizing insects. So similar insects are classified closely to each other, generally speaking. Of course, you can have a bumblebee and then you can have a bumblebee mimic robber fly and those would be classified very separately. So first thing to remember is that insects are a type of animal. So they'll be placed into the kingdom Animalia which you can see at the top right in the yellow. <clears throat> this is the most general level of the classification system. This is where we begin it and then at the very bottom in the dark blue you can see species. That's where we typically end at. Now keep in mind, in between all of these are sub uh, levels and intra levels and whatnot. So they belong to their own class of animals, which we call insecta. 
the lower you go in the classification system on the right side here, the more specific the classification gets. Insects are classified amongst over 30 orders and around 1,100 families. Keep in mind that as time goes on, these numbers change based on new scientific methods that will be used to classify the insects. And one of those that you're probably familiar with is DNA. At the very bottom of the classification system, we have the genus and species names. And when those two are put together, we have what is called a scientific name. The first part of the scientific name is the genus, and the second part of the scientific name is the species. This slide, I just wanted to continue giving some common insects that you may run into. So just remember that insects are everywhere. They are in the oceans, they're in the mountains, and they're in the deserts, and they are in your yards. So just pay attention to your surroundings, and this will allow you to discover more insects in your area. Remember that insects, um, remember that the most commonly encountered insects are different types of moths, butterflies, mosquitoes, and flies. And remember that on this slide, I have a mosquito shown in the middle there. A mosquito is a type of fly. So to wrap this video up, thank you for watching. I really appreciate you paying attention. I hope it was helpful for you. Please remember to like and subscribe to my videos uh, or like my channel or sorry, like my video and subscribe to my channel so I can make more videos for you. Remember, it's also free to like and subscribe. Fun fact, this picture here on the right is a damselfly. Damselflies are related to dragonflies and they are aerial predators of small flying insects. So they look super cute. They're super dangerous. Thank you and have a